Five Set Conversation Pieces by Christine Borland Visually Described by Kathleen Cowie Five Set Conversation Pieces was created by Scottish contemporary artist Christine Borland in 1998 and is displayed in our sculpture court as part of the permanent collection in Aberdeen Art Gallery. The sculpture court is on the ground floor and is a large grand space which exhibits several sculptures from a range of time periods. Five set conversation pieces consists of five separate sculptures, that is three-dimensional artworks. Together they make up the whole work. Each piece represents the five most common birthing positions that a baby's head assumes as it engages with its mother's pelvis just before birth. The size of each sculpture is 36 cm by 36 cm and is 31 cm in height. As you might expect, each of the five pieces is the shape and size of a woman's pelvic bones sitting upright, birth canal to the front, with the baby's skull in five different positions nestled inside each of the pelvises. They each replicate a woman's pelvis and a baby's skull exactly because Borland cast them from moulds made from real obstetric models of a woman's pelvic bones and a baby's skull. The baby skulls are arranged at five different angles inside the cupped shape of the five pelvises. They are arranged quite low on a wooden plinth that is covered by an airy glass case. The gallery also owns a piece which was a trial moquette for five set conversation pieces. This piece is available to handle as part of one of our treasure boxes. These are mini museums with objects for the public to handle so that you can appreciate and experience the sensation of size, surface texture and form. But what you might not expect is that the work is made from glazed bone china and the shiny surface is decorated in beautiful oriental style drawings of floral forms using bright ultramarine blue glaze. The effect is like Delft wear. This delicate surface decoration is strangely married with the weighty pelvic and skull forms, which have a medical, almost macabre edge to them. The blue glaze is handled in a light calligraphic manner. It looks as though it's drawn with a quill or a feathery brush. The pattern covers the entire inside of each of the five sculptures and the baby skulls cocooned within. The outside surface remains matte and undecorated. This gives a true bone-like effect, heavy, solid, almost bovine. You would feel the difference between the shiny, smooth inner surface texture and the dry, matte outer texture. The pieces are arranged or set at the same distances apart, which reminds one of a place setting at a formal table with fancy crockery, or perhaps a cabinet display of ornate vases, bowls and vessels. The distinctly cut shape of the pelvic sculptures reinforces this idea of cups and bowls. This brings us to another level of understanding about five set conversation pieces and reasons why Christine Borland made it and perhaps what she wanted us to think about when we experience the work. Firstly, the ceramic sculptural pieces are made by Borland very skillfully using a traditional casting process from the original obstetrics models of a pelvis and baby skull. The final medium in the casting process is bone china, which as a medium has significance because Borland is replicating bones. Bone china and porcelain contain actual bone ash, that's ground up cattle bones, in their composition. It also has significance because of the inspiration and story behind the work. Borland visited Liverpool Museum whilst she herself was pregnant with her first child. Liverpool was a large and busy trading port. 
It was also the centre for the production of English Delft ware, which was made in factories in and around Liverpool from 1756 until 1804. Typically, blue underglaze was applied directly to the bone china at firing stage, then dipped in a transparent overglaze and refired. This sealed the underglaze decoration and made the ware durable and waterproof, entirely suitable as tableware. English Delft ware was used by the ladies of the time for their afternoon teas whilst entertaining and engaging in conversation. This was particularly so when it later took a more sophisticated form and was made using fine porcelain to mimic the fashionable Delft ware coming out of Holland at the time, which in turn imitated the sought after imported Chinese porcelain. These tea sipping ladies were often the wives of the many successful sea traders and merchants that gravitated to Liverpool, making it a huge commercial centre and them very wealthy. In these earlier times of the 1700s and 1800s, the slave trade flourished out of Liverpool and many British seaports. The conditions of trade and transportation were founded on ignorance and were shockingly inhumane. Human beings used as commodities to be traded in the same ships that carried the imported Oriental China. Many slaves died en route to the Americas amongst them pregnant women and babies. The underlying irony and darkness of this piece cannot be underestimated. It offers us a thought-provoking narrative, as well as beautiful and contradictory sculptural forms, which suggest both human frailty and strength. I would now like to tell you a bit more about the artist. Christine Borland is a Scottish contemporary artist, born in 1965 in Darvel, Ayrshire. She describes how, in her childhood, she roamed the countryside close to where she grew up, observing and developing an interest in natural science. This continued when she went to Glasgow School of Art in the 1980s, extending her interest to human anatomy and life drawing. She then studied at Ulster University before returning to live and work in Glasgow. But it was not until Borland visited the Anatomy Museum and gained access to Glasgow University's collection of medical body parts that she really started to explore what was to become a lifelong preoccupation and inspiration, medicine and the history of medicine. She was amazed that human bones could be ordered and bought like an anonymous product. Borland makes us think about how we perceive the human body, its humanity and the life it has lived, and its journey to becoming a depersonalised specimen, a learning aid or a forensic sample. She questions medical and forensic ethics, what is acceptable in the guise of medicine. Borland works across many different media, such as photography, bronze, ceramics, plaster, glass, fabric and paper. This flexibility means that she can use whatever she thinks is the most appropriate medium for what she wants to communicate. Borland has expressed that, although a notion may have started in her head or roughly in a sketchbook, it's not until she starts working with the materials themselves that the idea takes shape. Working with the materials allows the concept to manifest itself. Borland also explores the truth of history and science. An interesting piece that explains this well is called L'Homme Double, created in 1997. Borland asked six trained sculptors to create a clay portrait bust that is a three-dimensional head and shoulders representation, of Joseph Mengel, the infamous Nazi war criminal. Equipping them with only the same two grainy photographs each, 
a short description of his appearance according to Auschwitz survivors, and a simple wooden plinth on which to show their finished piece, they were asked to leave the work unfired and therefore not finalised. They all created entirely different portraits, and when presented together, they could not provide a clear single identity for Joseph Mengel, but several, all of which may or may not be true. Borland also likes to show through her art that not all questions can be answered finally and categorically, but remain open to inquiry and have many controlling factors. Borland was part of a significant art movement in Britain during the late 1980s and the 1990s called the Young British Artists, whose work included that of Damien Hirst, Tracy Emin, Jake and Dinos Chapman and Jenny Saville, works from whom are also in the permanent collection of Aberdeen Art Gallery. Young British artists were, and still are, an influential force in conceptual art today, and were the first to use almost sensational, some might say attention-seeking, media-savvy techniques and materials to get their messages across about art, gender, politics and society. Borland, with her appropriation of medical and forensic materials and processes, was a leading figure in this loosely affiliated group of young British artists. Conceptual art is where the concept or the idea behind the artwork takes priority over appearance or completed product. The artist's concept is the driving force behind the creation of the work. The process of making the work is emphasised and sometimes the artist might not physically make the work but may employ the skills of technicians or fellow artists to best communicate the concept. Also, the term art is interpreted widely and the range of materials and processes is unlimited. For example, some conceptual artists might use the written word film media, or stage events known as happenings, or create whole environments which are known as installations. We can see how some knowledge of the concepts behind five set conversation pieces enriches what is at first encounter a fascinating work of art. Borland is now a professor at the Baltic Institute of Contemporary Art in Newcastle. She lives and works in Kilcreggan in Argyle. So, what makes five set conversation pieces so special? Christine Borland's work was recognised in 1997 when she was shortlisted for Britain's most prestigious contemporary art prize, the Turnell Prize. She was a leading figure in the Young British Artists Group. But most importantly, Borland seeks the truth. Hers is a forensic exploration of art, history and science, using a range of unexpected materials and techniques, which is what makes her a groundbreaking artist. There is a truth contained in five set conversation pieces, which possesses intrigue, great happiness and sadness, human strength and frailty. It is a key Borland artwork, purchased for the gallery in 2001 with monies from the National Fund for Acquisitions, the National Art Collections Fund, the Scottish Arts Council and the Macdonald Bequest, all helping to keep our collection here in Aberdeen fresh and current. This brings us to the end of the visual description of five set conversation pieces by Christine Borland. <laughs>